She had leg warmers. She wore jelly shoes in the summer and moon boots in the winter. She had freckles and really bad skin, just like me. And, and she had big, thick glasses and, and big braces that wrapped all around her head. <laughs> and I loved her. And so I, I did what any fourth grader in love does. <laughs> I chased her around the playground and kicked her in the shins. <laughs> And then I wove her together a multicolored friendship bracelet and I had my best friend deliver it during second period and, and by fourth period I noticed she was wearing it and so I knew that she and I were now going together. <laughs> and we went out for a long time, like, like a year. We had an amazing relationship and, but then one day I noticed she had taken the bracelet off so I knew that we had broken up. <laughs> and I said to my best friend, what did I do wrong? I don't know why she did this. He said, well, did you show her love and affection? And I said, I think so. And he said, did you make her feel like she was the most beautiful girl in the room? I said, I tried. And he said, well, did you, did you, you know, share words of affirmation with her? And I said, what? <laughs> no, no, I never actually talked to her. <laughs> said, oh, Jonah, that's your problem. You see, girls, they, they need love and tenderness and affection. They, they need to feel like they're the most special thing in the world to you. That you need to communicate with them. And I said, how do you know so much for being in the fourth grade? <laughs> and he said, did you even hold her hand? And I was like, uh, no, that's like third base. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with you? It's disgusting. <laughs> and, and the years went by, and we got into high school. And I don't know if I, I don't know if you can relate to this, but this girl, she she changed. You know, she changed. She got rid of the braces. She had beautiful straight teeth, and she got that Katy Perry proactive solution for her face. <laughs> she had very smooth, supple skin. <laughs> Supple. It's a gross word. But it's the only word I can think of to describe the suppleness in her skin. And pretty soon she sort of became like the it girl in school. Like every guy liked her. And I was still the dorky guy I always was. And, and I, I said to my mom, I don't know what happened. And my mom said, honey, she has blossomed into a beautiful young lady. And I said, I don't know what that means, and I don't want to know what that means. <laughs> Here, she's changed, and I haven't changed at all, and now I don't know what to do. It seemed like we were from just two different planets. And the time went on, and senior year, I, I just, I didn't know what to do. And my mom said, well, honey, you need to tell her. You need to tell her how you feel. And I said, mom, girls like that don't go for guys like me. And she said, honey, don't you say that. You're the most charming, handsome young man in the world. And I said, oh. Shucks. Thanks, Mom. Well. Even though I know that's what moms say to their ugly kids to make them feel. Thank you. And she said, she said, honey, you need to go for it. And she gave me just enough confidence to go. And so I went to school, and I walked straight up to her, and I said, Hey, what's up? What's up? Yeah. And she said, Oh, hey, Jonah, how are you? And I said, You know my name. <laughs> she said, Yeah, you're, you're in all of my classes. You always have been. And I said, Awesome. Anyways, I wanted to ask you a question. I was going to ask you the homecoming. And she said, oh, that's great, Joan. It's crazy. I actually wanted to ask you a question. What? Maybe she's going to ask me to the point. <laughs> and I said, okay, you go first. And she said, okay, well, here's the thing. This year, during the homecoming football game, at halftime, we're going to parade floats around the track. 
and each grade is going to have a float and they're going to get judged by the crowd and since we're seniors we really want to win and I'm in charge of the float and this year I was thinking of a kind of a different theme, I was thinking of doing like a float of like a big whale <laughs> and then uh, I thought of you. <laughs> Have you ever heard the story of Jonah and the whale? <laughs> no. I've never heard that one. I've never had old men come up to me and say like, Hey, son, how's the whale? <laughs> or like old men who didn't know as much about the Bible. How's the ark? <laughs> Yeah, I know the story of Jonah and the whale. And she said, well, we thought it'd be cute and ironic if maybe you got inside of the whale and you waved at the crowd. And I said, oh, awesome, okay. I'd do that, I guess, for you. Aww. And she said, oh, that's so sweet. Thank you, Jonah. Well, what, what did you want to ask me? And I said, um, it's kind of, it's actually about the whole whale situation. <laughs> so I'm, I'm good. I went home. I walked up to the front door, my mom was waiting for me at the door like moms do. And she opened it up and she said, Hey honey, how did it go? And I said, You're the devil! And I went back to my room and I decided I was giving up on love forever. I decided I was going to give up on love and I was going to fo on, focus on my collection of various Star Wars figurines. <laughs> because she was from a galaxy far, far away. She was a girl, she lived over my curtain. She was lipstick and luxury, chased as a pearl and a lady waiting there. The thing she loved most is a cup of tea and toast to share with whoever you are. Kiss me and hug me and say I love me If you'll be my bright shooting star You're kind of speeding up, you want me to be done with the song? It's all so high in the sky that to get up to you I've got to put on my moon boots and fly new Star Wars movies. They were going to be the last in the series, but, but they were supposed to be the first in the series. I didn't understand what it meant, and I did not care. I was going to go, and I was going to wear my Lando Calrissian outfit to the premiere. So I did, and I was standing in line all by myself, and I looked over, and there she was. The same girl. She was dressed up as a Wookiee. <laughs> And I said, oh my gosh, I can't believe that you still, just like when we were kids. And she said, oh, hey, Jonah. She was embarrassed. She didn't want to be seen by anyone. And she said, I can't believe that you still. I mean, I figured probably. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, would you want to sit by me? I'm here by myself. And so I said, oh, I would love to. And I did. I sat by her and I didn't even care about the movie. All I cared about were furry little Chewbacca hands. <laughs> so I did the move that I had been saving up since the fourth grade. I crossed my arms like this, and I stuck these two fingers out like this and sort of nudged her arm a little bit. And pretty soon she got the hint, and she crossed her arms, and she stuck out these two fingers, and pretty soon we were holding fingertips. <laughs> and then by the end of the movie, we were pretty much fully interdigitating. <laughs> We walked outside afterward and she said, that was amazing, um, thank you, I hope I get to see you around sometime. I said, no, don't go, would you maybe want to come to my parents' house and get have a cup of tang, the beverage that could be served hot or cold, your choice, and you could have some toast with cinnamon and sugar on top. And she said, you like tang and toast 
in Star Wars? And I said, you know, you know I love him the most, girl. <laughs> She said, I like those things. And we had an awkward silence. And then you know what I did, y'all? I kissed her. Go, Jonah! I love this guy. And I liked it. <laughs> See, this is the truth. This is the truth. And this is the reason why, like guys, why you're walking down the sidewalk with your boys and you look across the street and you see a beautiful girl and, and she's arm in arm with a guy and you nudge your buddy and you say, dude, how did that guy get that girl? That gives me hope. <laughs> see, the truth is, the truth is, is that real love is about the real heart connection. It's, it's about loving one another for exactly who God made us. It's, it's, it's about the fact that we can be as dorky as we want to be. See, girls may play like they want to be loved for what they are on the outside, but it isn't true. They want to be known for who they are on the inside. That's the good stuff. And then one day when I was working at the corner grocery store, she said, part of me don't I know your name. I said, it's Jonah, I don't know, but is that Wonder Bread and Hello? Dare I dream about the value size tang? She said, it's fruity, I know. She said, it's sweet, ball show. <laughs> Took out the wind in my ear, and then I kissed her and hugged her. I told her that I loved her, now we live over my beaver lane. And now we live over my beaver lane. That just made my entire night.